Ahoy there, mateys. Gather round and listen closely, for I be about to tell ye a story joke that be more twisty-turny than a pretzel dipped in butter. The hilarious history of pirates. Imagine this. It's the 1600s. Europe's all a Twitter cause Christopher Columbus just stumbled upon this whole new world chock full of shiny gold and enough sugar to make your teeth sing sea shanties. Now naturally, everyone wants a piece of that treasure pie. But here's the thing. Getting your hands on that gold was no walk in the park. You had to sail these rickety wooden ships across vast oceans, filled with more scurvy-ridden sailors than you could shake a parrot at. That's where our pirate pals come in, like the original delivery dudes of danger. These weren't your mama's pirates, though. They were a motley crew of scoundrels, scalawags, and folks who just couldn't hold a steady job on land. We're talking peg-legged fellas with parrots on their shoulders, swashbuckling ladies who could sword fight in heels and probably win, and even a blind pirate named Black Bart Roberts who terrorized the seas with nothing but a good sense of smell and a mean sense of direction. Now, these pirates weren't exactly what you'd call lawful good. They were more like chaotic neutral, partiers with a plundering problem. Their motto? Why work for gold when you can steal it from someone who has way too much? Here's how it worked. A pirate ship looking all spiffy with its red sails, because who needs camouflage when you're this terrifying, would spot a nice plump merchant vessel loaded with doubloons and spices. They'd raise their Jolly Roger flag, which basically said, hey, we're here to steal your stuff and maybe sing some sea shanties later. The merchant ship, being a bit of a scaredy cat, would try to outrun the pirates. Cue the epic chase scene. Cannons would roar, parrots would squawk, because apparently even birds like a good fight. And the pirates would swing from ropes like a drunken jungle gym competition. Now, if the pirates caught up, things could get a bit messy. There'd be sword fights that would make fencing look like patty cake and enough yelling to make a sailor blush. And sailors blush a lot, let me tell you. But hey, at least they had rum to drown their sorrows or celebrate their victories. Pirates were equal opportunity partiers. But here's the kicker. Being a pirate wasn't all sunshine and stolen loot. Their lives were brutal. They faced storms that could crack a kraken's beak, diseases that spread faster than rumors on a pirate ship, which is saying something, and constant threats from the navies who weren't exactly fans of their whole stealing everything that isn't nailed down business model. So, why did they do it? Well, some did it for the adventure, some for the rum, and some because, frankly, the open seas and the chance to be your own boss seemed a lot more appealing than spending your days swabbing the decks on a stuffy navy ship. You see, pirates weren't just interested in gold. They also carted around all sorts of exotic goods, spices, fabrics, even new types of vegetables. They were like the Uber Eats of the 17th century, except instead of hangry customers, they had cutlass-wielding pirates. By traipsing all over the globe and trading their loot, pirates unknowingly spread cultures and helped connect different parts of the world. So, next time you bite into a spicy curry or wear a silk shirt, you can thank a pirate for introducing it to the world, even if they got it by somewhat unconventional means. All right. That'd be enough history for one day. But before we set sail on the high seas of hilarity with our pirate joke, let me ask you this. If pirates were the original delivery dudes, what kind of special requests do you think they'd get? Stay tuned to find out, mateys. There be laughs ahoy. Avast, ye landlubbers. Gather round and listen to a tale of swashbuckling bravery and a captain who was, well, let's just say, fashionably challenged. We're sailing the high seas in the golden age of piracy, where danger lurked around every reef and treasure chests overflowed with enough gold to make a dragon drool. Our story follows Captain Pegleg Pete, a fearsome fellow with a beard that could house a family of barnacles and a battle cry that could curdle milk at 50 paces. Now, Pete wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but what he lacked in brains he made up for in well, something. 
let's just say his strategic brilliance wasn't exactly legendary. One fine day, Pete's ship, the Rusty Nail, was cruising along when a lookout screeched. Captain, pirate ship on starboard side. Panic rippled through the crew faster than a stowaway with a yen for grog. But Pete, cool as a cucumber dipped in rum, boomed. Fear not me, hearties. Bring me my red shirt. The first mate, a scrawny fella named Nigel with a nervous twitch, scurried below deck and returned with a bright red shirt that could be seen from Neptune's bathtub. Pete donned the shirt with the swagger of a peacock and roared. To battle. The fight was fierce. Cannons boomed, cutlasses clashed, and parrots squawked encouragement. Or maybe insults. It's hard to tell with those feathery fiends. But Pete, his red shirt a beacon of courage, or maybe a giant target depending on who you asked, led his crew to a glorious victory. Though there were some bumps and bruises, the rusty nail emerged victorious. Later that day, another pirate ship hove into view, this one twice the size of the first. The crew, still shaken from the previous battle, looked to Pete with wide eyes. But Pete, ever the picture of composure, bellowed. Same drill, lads, bring me my red shirt. The battle raged anew, even fiercer than before. Cannons roared louder, cutlasses clashed angrier, and parrots, well, you get the idea. But once again, Pete, his red shirt a symbol of unwavering leadership, or maybe just a giant shoot here sign, led his crew to victory. This time though, the victory came at a heavier cost, with several injuries and a singed beard for poor Pete. Exhausted but triumphant, the crew gathered on deck that night, nursing wounds and sharing grog. One young deckhand, a wide-eyed lad named Barnaby, finally piped up, Captain, sir, why the red shirt before battle? Pete, sporting a bandage that looked suspiciously like a parrot had taken a liking to his ear, puffed out his chest and declared, In the heat of battle, a red shirt hides the blood, lad. That way, the crew fights on without fear. The crew, touched by Pete's apparent selflessness, murmured their admiration. Barnaby, however, still looked a tad confused. As dawn painted the sky a fiery red, the lookout shrieked. Captain, ten pirate ships on the horizon, all with boarding parties. The crew froze, fear etched on their faces. Pete, however, remained unfazed. He took a deep breath, then, All right, lads. He boomed, a hint of panic creeping into his voice. This time, bring me my brown pants. If you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.